So I get to do both this time. <laughs> it's good to see all of you, and I'm glad you're here this morning. So I just started with the first part of our story, the part where we get to see this wonder and glory of God's beautiful garden. And I want us to reflect on this little prayer that many of you probably know. We used to say it every Sunday, and it says, All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. And this story reflects on that prayer. So when I'm reading a passage of scripture, especially if I'm preparing to preach, I find myself looking for two things. The first one is the good news that the passage proclaims. What does it tell me about the kingdom of God? What does it tell me about the love of our Lord? Where is the liberation or the beauty or the healing proclaimed? And the second is the challenge. How is God using this word to challenge us to new things, to grow in our faith or to repent or to live more fully? As you heard me sharing with the children earlier, I see such good news in this story despite its rather somber overtones. The good news I see is that God, God's self, is the creator of this, our vineyard. And he tends us with care and provides a wall of protection and a watchtower to keep us safe. And in the wine press, God provides a way for the fruit of our labors to be used for such joy. As I walk through my garden each day, I feel a connection with each plant and tree. I long to see each one thriving and becoming its fullest self. And I imagine God seeing each of us in that same way. This is good news. But what about the challenge? In this gospel reading today, Jesus is recollecting a familiar parable that the people have heard many times before from the scroll of Isaiah. Now in Isaiah, the story begins this way. I will sing for the one I love, a song about his vineyard. My loved one had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He dug it up, cleared it of stones, planted it with the choicest vines, and he built a watchtower in it and cut out a wine press as well. Sounds familiar. But then Jesus takes a turn. In the Isaiah passage, the story is about the grapes themselves. And why is it that they are not yielding fruit true to their nature? Why are they sour when they should be sweet? Why is there bloodshed where there should be justice? And why are there cries of distress where righteousness should reign? But in today's gospel, Jesus turns and directs the focus of the story to the tenants, or in the Greek, the vine dressers, the stewards of that land. Near the end of the gospel reading, it says that the chief priests and Pharisees understand that Jesus is talking about them in this parable. And this parable is often preached about the vineyard, that the vineyard's going to be taken away from those guys, and it's going to be given to us. But any time I hear about the Pharisees, I've learned that I should give a glance to myself as well. After all, the Pharisees were people who studied the Bible religiously, as do I. They were people who tried to separate themselves from sinful action, as do I. And they were often leaders among the people, as am I. <coughs> And I dare to say that many of these things might be true about you as well. But we resist. The Pharisees, they're known as people who do as I say and not as I do. They're known as hypocrites in their walk of faith. They're known to be judging others, <coughs> but failing to look closely at their own failings. They're known for feeling proud when others notice how well they pray or how faithful they are in attendance. I never do any of those things. Or do I? Well, you never do any of those things. Or do you? Sometimes we walk in the footsteps of the Pharisees. I find it's always <coughs> a good job 
to look at what they're being challenged for. So here it goes. The term used in that Greek says that the folks in that vineyard, the tenants, are vine dressers. They are trained and capable stewards of the vineyard. And apparently in the story, they are in fact bringing about a harvest of fruit. So we look in our own lives. What gifts have we been given? What opportunities has God placed us in? What vineyard has he carefully built up and carved out and placed us in that we might bear much fruit? And yet, like the vine dressers in our story, we start thinking, I'm the one working here. I put all of this time into this work, into this vineyard, or this job. I'm the one who invested myself in these children, or this church. This is really mine. I'm the one who should reap the benefits. I'm the one who should get all the praise and all the credit. Maybe I'll just ignore those servants who come to remind me that this is actually God's thing. It's God's vineyard. It's God's work. It's God's children. It's God's church. Maybe I'll think twice before trying to silence them so I can just go on believing that it's just mine, that it's just ours. Maybe that's why the landowner sent his son to remind them and us that it actually belongs to God and that God just asks us to tend the part we've been gifted to tend, and to listen to his breath, the breath of the Spirit as he walks through the garden of our lives, to hear his heart rejoice as we bring, as we bring forth gifts from our labors. Now, when my two-year-old godson is over at the house, he loves to go into the garden. He loves to look and see if there's anything ripe enough to pick. He giggles with delight when he finds a squash or a bell pepper that he can harvest. And sometimes he just picks it off the vine and pops it in his mouth and says, yum. But sometimes he grabs them up and he wants to run and show them to his moms or show them to us. He wants to share what he finds. He doesn't want to hoard it. He sees it all as gift. And he's learning to be a caretaker of the garden. He's learning to be gentle with the new flowers. Returning earthworms to their homes. He's learning that each plant needs water and life, but in different amounts. And he's learning to respect everything, even the things he doesn't understand. I want to follow his example. I want to be that kind of steward. The kind of steward that rejoices in all that God has entrusted to me and shares it joyously with the world. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen.